what's going on guys in this video i'm gonna go over the bunker in depth this is my ultimate guide on the bunker so if you just purchased the bunker or are trying to learn about the bunker this is a video for you we're gonna go over every single thing that you need to know about the bunker and how to make the bunker as profitable as possible with that being said please do consider dropping a like on the video and subscribing for more guides like this for gta 5 online so the bunker is one of the most profitable businesses in the game believe it or not to this day as a passive business and the business can be run actively and has a lot of cool features that a lot of players still don't know about to this day that can unlock certain rewards and things like that so let's take a look at buying the bunker so to buy the bunker you're simply going to go on your phone then go on to the internet and go to money and services here you'll actually find a website called maze bank foreclosures and in here you'll see a little blue icon with a little bunker symbol on it now this is where you guys can go ahead and buy the actual bunker and there are multiple locations the two locations that i actually personally believe in is the chumash bunker location as it is the most southern location this is the location i currently own as well as i hear many many people vouch for the farmhouse location so between these two locations is what i pick but if you guys automatically have the Polito bay bunker for free or anything like that don't worry about it you can always move later you can make money with that bunker just the same as you will with this one it Will just be a little bit more inconvenient so when purchasing your bunker there are modifications you may want to purchase and i'll talk about them a little bit throughout the video the first thing you're going to want to consider is the bunker style so the bunker style is something that is completely cosmetic and gives you no utility whatsoever but it is something you might want to consider i really do like yellow because yellow is my favorite color and then we have the personal quarters which will allow you to set the bunker as a spawn point and that only costs two hundred sixty-five thousand dollars. if you have the extra cash definitely something i consider picking up and then we have have the shooting range which will give you access to your own personal shooting range within the bunker this is a very expensive cost at seven hundred and forty thousand dollars honestly i would refrain from picking this up right away but there is a cool set of challenges you will get with this to unlock special rewards throughout the game and they are quite difficult so if you're new to the game i would definitely hold off on this purchase then we have the gun locker which before was a really good addition if you didn't have any other businesses the gun locker was 170 $75,000 and gave you access to a custom loadout. If you don't already have a custom loadout or a business that already has a gun locker, you should definitely go ahead and pick this up for $175 later on when you have extra cash. As well as we have last but not least, the transportation. You have the Caddy 1 and Caddy 2. I made the mistake of picking up the Caddy 2 because it looked cool and it seemed like a good idea at the time, but once you drive it around in the bunker, you clearly find out very fast that the Caddy 2 is just way too long and isn't superior in any really any way whatsoever when it comes to getting around in the bunker. I would definitely refrain from getting the Caddies in general unless you have extra cash and just want to have that to complete your set with the bunker. So that will kind of conclude all the modifications that you need to know about that are through this website. So so once you go to your bunker, you're actually going to go through an animation, you're going to probably talk to Agent 14, they'll show you all the little things that are in there like that. Really neat little cutscene. But after that, you're going to want to go over to your computer in the bunker. It's over here and you'll see this little computer icon. You will need to be registered as a CEO or VIP to use this computer. So before going ahead and doing so to use the computer, you're going to have to go into your interaction menu and then go register as a CEO, VIP or motorcycle club president. If you don't know how to do any of those three things, I'll link the videos in the card above or in the description box below. So once you've registered, you guys can go take a look at the computer and you're going to be brought to a screen with multiple tabs so you'll see your total earnings your location in the top left hand corner your total sales and all of these things if you just bought the bunker obviously these will all be set to zero so you don't have to worry about this you actually have something called stock level research progress and supply level i'll quickly go over what each of these mean so you can understand how the business is run Currently, my business status is suspended because I have no supplies. So pretty much you steal or purchase supplies to turn into stock level. And then once the supplies have time to actually be generated into actual stock, you'll be able to sell that stock for a profit. So very simply, you're going to steal supplies or buy supplies and it's going to fill that supply level bar. And then over time, that supply level bar will disappear and become less and less as the stock level bar increases so that's how those two bars interact with each other 
You can also buy or steal supplies to increase your research progress. And I'll get into research a little bit more, but it pretty much unlocks certain weapon attachments and things like that. And how these bars interact with each other is brought up through the manage staff tab. But before we get any further into those things, we really want to take a look at the upgrades as they are really important. As you can see, I've purchased all three upgrades for this business. The equipment upgrade is one of the most important upgrades for this business along with the staff upgrade as it will make it so your supplies turn into stock at a faster rate as well as increase the actual worth of the stock when selling. This is really nice to have as a upgrade and is super important. Though I have never been raided at the bunker, I'm sure with current updates things have changed and the security upgrade is something I always recommend as my last equipment upgrade or upgrade for the bunker business. You definitely want to consider getting all three upgrades, specifically the equipment and staff upgrade are the ones you are going to want to prioritize. And then we're going to take a look at managing staff. So you can manage or slash assign your staff to whatever you want to assign them to. You can assign them to manufacturing only, which means all supplies you've accrued will be directly given to the stock level. So this will only be going towards profitability towards the business. You can also assign them to just research, which means all the supplies will go to the research progress bar, which if you're trying to grind through your research, this can be helpful. And then you can actually assign them to both. So you can actually get like a 50 50 split between the two. So your supply level gets split between the stock bar and the research progress now with this being said most of us aren't going to care about research after a certain point so you're better off to go ahead and do manufacturing I always assign my staff to manufacturing so I can get the best bang for my buck again as I said assign your staff to manufacturing so you can increase your profitability of this business we'll quickly take a look at the research you'll see that you will have a project in the bottom right hand corner uh, clearly mine's inactive because I have zero progress on a research right now but you can actually fast track research so once you get even a tiny sliver of research progress once you have a weapon or modification set in that bar you can fast track the research for two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars and that is probably the best way to go about it it actually will be cheaper and less stressful to actually pay that two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars and you can always wait till it's on a sale or some type of boost so you don't have to waste your time now i'll take a quick look and view the unlocks you can unlock all kinds of cool weapon attachments and armor for vehicles different libraries and things like that and special types of ammo so there is a category where there's locked, unlocked, and all. You guys can check out what you have unlocked already and check out what you haven't unlocked. And they are actually given to you at random. You do not get to pick which one you get to research, which makes this a very big pain in the butt. And that will bring us to the resupply page. Now, resupplying is definitely something a lot of players are interested in and wondering how they should go about this. Now, I personally, if you have the equipment and staff upgrade, I'm always going to buy supplies, but you can steal supplies if you want to. Stealing supplies is a waste of time in my opinion, because your time would be better off spent doing other things, but it will give you the most profitability with the business. It's very simple. Most of the steel supply missions require you to go out, maybe take out a few enemies and bring back a truck or a crate or two back to the actual bunker. You can do this over and over again and it only gives you a little fraction of the bar. The resupply bar will only be filled by one fifth so that means you'll have to do five of these missions to fill the supply bar. And These missions take anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes so that's a lot of time wasted getting supplies when I can just click a button and buy supplies for $75,000. Mind you, this does eat into my profits obviously because I'm paying $75,000, but once I have the equipment and staff upgrade, it is definitely worth my money to actually just buy the supplies because I could be running KO Perico or some type of crate cargo or something like that in the meantime while my supplies are being stolen for me. So much better choice to go ahead and buy the $75,000 and that $75,000 doesn't buy you one fifth of the supplies it buys you the entire bar of the supplies so you don't have to worry about this at all if you're just starting off you can always steal them but and this is only gonna be really profitable if you have both the equipment and staff upgrade 
Another neat thing that you'll notice when you enter your bunker that is actually relatively new to the bunker is the access weapon parts to ammunition. So the access weapon parts are sitting in the front of the bunker in a truck and you'll see this truck every so often with some crates in the back and you'll have the opportunity actually to deliver these and these weapon parts will accrue every 48 minutes in real time. So every 48 minutes you'll have the opportunity to actually deliver these parts to one of the ammunitions on the map. You will not know the location until you actually leave the bunker and then you'll have to drive on over there and deliver the parts to the ammunition. It's a very simple mission. You guys will actually be granted $50,000 for completing this mission. $50,000 every 48 minutes for doing pretty much absolutely nothing is decent passive income. Another feature that the bunker actually has past in the back left hand corner is where you guys can go and check out the MOC and anti-aircraft trailer if you have purchased one. Here you'll be able to modify these vehicles changing the colors of them changing the weapons on them and maybe bulletproofing and changing the armor on these vehicles really really nice ability to go do that a lot of players don't know this is where you modify the moc and anti-aircraft trailer so definitely something you guys will want to check out if you haven't done so already an add-on that you purchase through the maze bank foreclosures for the bunker is the target range now many players don't know this there are challenges that you need to complete for the target range and they are actually relatively difficult especially if you're not used to uh, playing these and you're on controller it's really free aim and you're gonna have to really get good at using this weapon now every weapon has several tiers of rewards and once you complete like tier one for all the weapons you're actually going to get a reward and one of the rewards for completing the first tier is an, an extra five slots for your explosive weapons so that means your grenades you'll have an extra five grenades an extra five sticky bombs an extra five tear gas for completing that when you purchase your sticky bombs stuff like that you won't have to buy them as often because you have those extra five slots so it's definitely worth going ahead and completing the first tier for all of these challenges you also can get the cool little clothing pieces and things like that for completing all the tiers of challenges for each weapon another add-on you can buy is the caddy and you can actually request the caddy outside of the bunker now which i thought was pretty neat so as i said with research you can always fast track your research and buy supplies for your research and let it accrue over time but something they recently added is agent 14 you can go ahead and call them up and you can request bunker research once you request a bunker research, he'll give you a call back, giving you a mission, and you simply have to go ahead and complete the mission. Very simple, you'll usually have to take out a target and bring back the research to the bunker. This will actually increase your research bar by one fifth as well, so you guys can do these missions much, much quicker and progress your bunker research way faster and way cheaper in the long run. So if you're not trying to spend the whopping amount of cash to fast track your research, this might be something you want to consider. With that being said, we're gonna take a look at how to make this business as profitable as possible. To make the bunker as profitable as possible as a solo player, you're gonna to wanna to take a few things into consideration. And the main thing you're gonna to wanna to take into consideration is how many vehicles you're going to need to use to deliver the stock in your bunker. Now, many players do not like to go back and forth to grab their vehicles and and some missions are very difficult to do as a solo player. There is two solutions to this. Now the first solution that a lot of players do opt in for for the bunker is when the bunker reaches 25 units or a base value of $175,000 when you have both equipment upgrades and staff upgrades. So when you have both those upgrades and your bunker says you have $175,000 worth of supplies to sell or stock to sell, you will be able to sell that with one vehicle. If you only have one of those upgrades, it'll be 150. And if you have neither of the upgrades at 125,000, you'll be able to sell at one vehicle. So no upgrades equals 125, one upgrade equals 150, and then two upgrades is 175 thousand dollars so as long as you stay underneath those amounts of money you will only get one vehicle as your sell mission every single time anything higher than that will be two vehicles but you can still get the phantom wedge vehicle at any level of sell that is the number one option it's just staying below that one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars when you're selling when you have both equipment and staff upgrades now the second option which i generally opt for is to go ahead and sell only using the phantom wedge mission so when you start up your mission to sell your bunker you can always just quit out you won't lose your entire stock or supply or anything like that but you will use a portion now this can be 
very irritating, but over time, it's actually worth it. Now that I've done it a few times, I find that within three to five times of doing it, I almost guaranteed get the Phantom Wedge mission, which is really, really nice. And it's a really easy mission to do solo. So I always, if I don't get the Phantom Wedge, I just quit out and take that hit. When you're first starting out though, and you are trying to make money with the bunker, I understand this is not optimal because you are going to lose a little bit of profit. It's actually not that much. You can do it quite a few times before you even really notice the difference, especially when you get the business up and running regularly. So in my opinion, it is definitely worth it to take Take the hit of the cost for leaving the match and retrying again to sell to see if you're going to get the phantom wedge mission but if not go ahead and use that first method as a solo player or if you're fortunate enough and have friends or someone in the lobby that's willing to help you go ahead and add them to help you sell another thing that is going to really help you maximize your profits is the master control terminal because you'll be able to restock your bunker from there instead of traveling all the way out to your bunker every time you can restock all your businesses from the master control terminal which is located in the arcade if you want more details about this i'll leave a link in the description box below and a card up above to help you guys figure out how to go about using the master control terminal to resupply your bunker but of course having that closer location such as the farmhouse or chumash location as i mentioned earlier will definitely help you save time traveling out to that bunker when you need to resupply or restock and with today's load times it's almost always best just to set your spawn location to the bunker if you have those accommodations and join an invite only lobby so you guys can go ahead and spawn there another thing that will help you stay profitable is selling in invite only lobbies now yes i am 100 percent aware there is a bonus i think it's one percent per player or something like that in your lobby for selling in a public lobby with that being said i do not believe it's worth your time because you will get griefed. Chances are you're gonna get griefed. It really sucks when you get griefed and that little percentage over time will add up, of course, but the amount of times you're gonna get griefed is just making the situation too stressful and in the long run, it's much easier just to sell in those invite only lobbies, in my opinion. As I mentioned earlier, to keep the bunker profitable, you're going to want to have those staff and equipment upgrades and buy your supplies. So to steal the supplies, it'll take you about five missions, as I said, to fill that supply bar, which even at like 12 minutes, each will take you about an hour say on average to complete all five of those missions just over 10 minutes a mission and you guys are looking at that hour time spent to steal those supplies and you're gonna have to do this five times to fill your stock bar it takes five of those full supply bars to actually fill the stock bar so instead of wasting your time spending five hours doing steel missions for your bunker, you'd be much better off spending those five hours running KO Pericos or something like that in the background, or even import export crates or whatever you choose to do. Your time would definitely be better off spent doing that. For example, to pay for the entire stock bar to be filled or the supply bar to be filled five times to fill the stock bar, you're gonna spend $375,000, which is quite a bit and eats into your profits. Your total revenue earned will be $1,050,000 netting you a total profit of six hundred and seventy five thousand dollars and this is without any two times money bonuses or anything like that yes it costs you three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars but you're still profiting six hundred and seventy five thousand dollars and you didn't have to spend five hours of your time playing the game doing steel missions those five hours could easily be spent doing KO Pericos. And if you break up the time and everything like that, you could easily fit in five KO Pericos in five hours. You could potentially make $5 million running KO Pericos during that time versus saving yourself $375,000. I hope this doesn't confuse you because I know I'm really wordy, but hopefully you understand that your time is definitely better off spent doing other things and saving yourself that $375,000 is quite clear of a gap there. That is how you guys will go ahead and make the business profitable by buying those equipment and staff upgrades, buying supplies, and then selling using the Phantom Wedge mission solo or having some friends. That's how I would go about doing it. That's how I've done it. Something to keep in mind, it will take about 10 minutes for the supplies to be delivered to your bunker. So you have to wait that 10 minutes for it to arrive, but that's no big deal because you'll be doing other things to keep yourself entertained so when you have both the upgrades 
the staff and equipment upgrade for your bunker it will take two hours and 20 minutes for your bunker to convert the whole supply bar into one fifth of a stock bar so you're gonna have to do that five times which will work out to 12 hours so 12 hours it takes for your entire stock bar to become full keep this in mind when you're using this business so this is a very passive business but it does add up over time when you're stacking it with your other businesses I hope this guide helps you guys understand how to run the bunker and make some money hope you guys took something new away from this video if you don't mind don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe and as always thanks for watching